Uh, welcome to the Farm Kenya Show, and it is a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday. Wherever you're joining us from, I promise you, today's conversation will be life changing. What do I mean? Because every time and in every generation, there's something that happens that is sort of a pivotal moment for that time and that era. And what we've seen in the recent past is that technology has been that pivotal moment and is touching on each and every sector. Today, we are talking about utilization of technology in the field of, for example, artificial intelligence. That is one big thing that is happening. But in our context at the Farm Kenya Show, in our farms, is it possible to utilize technology to lead to profits? That is one. But more importantly, to lead to quality produce and healthy produce for the populace. Because each and every single person and each and every single population needs to eat. That will be our focus today. We'll be looking at the nexus of technology and farming. And remember that we are having the Agritech Africa exhibition coming up, the ninth edition. Also, we'll be delving into that and look off at the gains that have been made over the eight other editions and what do we expect on the ninth edition what is that life-changing thing and more critically before we go to the news for the smallholder farmers which are majority or in this particular country will be giving you practical solutions especially at such a time we've been having lots of rains how do you handle that now we it's being projected we be, will be having uh, a, a a season of drought how do you handle yourself utilize the resources around you to make sure that you still keep production and not only production but quality production that will be our, fo uh, our focus today right here on the farm kenya show and i have a heavy heavy panel uh, with me in studio of course i have uh Sanyal desai who's the ceo of radical communications and i have dr barat patel chairman of barat Bagas energy limited and he's also a surgeon all right he repairs hips but today he's doing a different kind of surgery he is cutting slicing and repairing our agricultural systems to make it better welcome to the show my name is no keep and we'll begin with the news To start us off, the Standard Group has actually partnered with other stakeholders in Eldoret, Western Geisha County, to mitigate the effects of climate change by planting trees at the Eldoret Golf Club during the Standard Classic Golf event. The Standard Group, Eka Hotel, Eldoret Hospital, and the club planted more than a thousand trees at the facility to mark its 100th anniversary. Standard Group Editor-in-Chief Ocheng Rapuro says that the initiative aligns with the company's support of their presidential call to plant 50 billion trees in the country. We are killing the seas by our use of nylon, by our use of plastics. So can we avoid that? And uh, I would urge KWS, this place requires uh, signage so that people can know that uh, they are entering a place which requires uh, total care so that they don't drop uh, plastics just aimlessly. If everybody did what you do, would this be a better place? That is my sixth question. So whatever we are doing, let's ask ourselves, if everybody did what I do, whether this world would be a better place. So let us choose to do the right thing. Mine is to urge all of us to ensure that our ocean is safe, not only for the living organisms or for the biodiversity in the ocean, but also for us to use. The good legacy in your neza, tuneza acha katika hii ulimwengu si pesa wala nini. The good legacy we can left behind is what good, what good thing have you done to this world? What good have you done to this planet? Kile gizuri chenye utakuwa umefanyi planet 
ndo watu watakukumbuka nacho alright um i like us to take a look at the issue of farmers and case of a case of neglect now farmers in garissa county have accused the government of doing so little to find a permanent solution to the perennial floods in the region the farmers staged demonstrations in garissa town in a bid to pressure both levels to construct mega dams and drill canals to address the flood menace the county has an estimated 3000 group farmers who practice farming along the river in the four sub counties of garissa balambala bura and masalani the loss is big the other day when we were with the ministry they estimated 2.2 billion kenya shillings to be the loss that we have governments can have an input into that you cannot go you cannot dream it is not a strange thinking we have seen how the river have gone and it's not science rocket science to know that all the farms have been destroyed watu wanakuja hapa wanatuahidi miaka nenda miaka rudi mp ule ni president ni president governor wote hakuna hata kutuambia pole peke yake hiyo ingeturidhisha hakuna mtu ametuambia pole wale debit president amekuja hapa akaongea kuhusu mafuriko wale watu wameadhirika lakini watu ya mashamba mpaka wa sasa hata kuleta mbegu peke yake hakuna na hatuwezi tukarudi mashamba mpaka tupate mashini utarudi shamba huna mashini utaweka vipi maji mpaka tupewe mashini wanaweza ku, ku, kuanza maisha yao tena ya ukulima kwa njia gani kama hakuna usaidizi serikali kuu na serikali ya county tunauliza muko wapi All right so on one side we are seeing neglect of farmers in Garissa county but let's head to Baringo where for decades Baringo south has been synonymous with banditry areas like Arabal Mukutani and Mochongoi bore the brunt of this violence with hundreds losing their lives and livelihoods uh, displacement also became a grim reality leaving one thriving community shattered but the key word is but there's a new story that is being written in Baringo South a quiet revolution is underway fueled not by weapons but by seeds residents are turning away from their traditional livestock farming as a way of life and are embracing agriculture this shift they say is leading to a gradual decline in the rampant insecurity that has plagued the region Hii nyumba Baringo South imekuwa imetengwa sana kwa sababu hata mambo ya mabarabara hakuna. Na hii equalization fund ikikuja kama inatusaidia ku open up roads itakuwa imetusaidia sana imeturejesha sasa mahali hata watu wengine wako. Sisi maamua juu unaona hii mangombe sasa inatuletea shida juu hii watu wanatakanga ngombe ama mtu. Asa tumeona yeye tulime. Tulime kama serikali watatusupport, tulime hii mashamba watatengenezea hata maji. Ikuja kwa mashamba watatengenezea kitu kama irrigation ndo tutaja maneno ya kufuka mangombe ama mbuzi. Mabarabara ndio shida na tungeomba kama kuna maendeleo inaizaleta hali hii sana ni mambo ya barabara because we have so many insecurity roads ambazo hazijatengenezwa na zikitengenezwa zitamaliza mambo insecurity kabisa na wakulima watakuwa na barabara nzuri ya kusafirisha mi mazao yao hii barabara kutoka la maiwe ateremuke kupitia karkoron kibriyoko ateremuke kachela hiyo ifunguliwe tunaomba hii barabara nyingine kutoka la maiwe ateremuke tanda iende baka seremwe na ende baka busta huko chini huko mlima huko juu hiyo barabara tunaomba ifunguliwe pia akipunguliwa barabara itafungusa kwanza 
nguvu ya walivu yale inaiva Alright, and finally, in an effort to improve the country's food production and security, as well as farmers' income, uh, actually the Kenya National Farmers Federation, uh, that is Kenneth, in collaboration with Two Scale Program, have formed the Inclusive Agribusiness Club. Now, the club's objective is to create a symbiotic working relationship with all stakeholders in the agricultural sector kenaf ceo david mailuta believes such collaborations will not only hasten the achievement of the sustainable development goal one and two of no hunger but also provide a network for networking and learning especially for people in the value chain so all this is complemented by small catalytic grants where there's a lot of uh, disjointedness in how these three sectors are working together. When you look at the public sector, the government at the national level and the county level, one at the national level, they are doing their own things. The county level is doing its own things. When you look at the private sector, you know, we are not really, they are not really talking to, to each other, with each other. When you look at the civil society sector, you know, there's also a lot of uh, um, uh, silos, you know, each organization doing their small piece of a bigger puzzle. So we thought if we could bring this club together, uh, if we could establish a platform, a forum, where we could bring all these voices together so that if we are talking about um, transforming agricultural production and productivity, so we are talking about how do we enhance farmers' incomes, all these actors, because we do believe that each of the actors, be it in the private sector, in the public sector, in the civil society sector, each actor has a role to play. We have brought together uh, more than 10 partners who are both private and uh, public and private sector actors to uh, hear what each of them is doing and therefore learn from lessons uh, learned by implementing various projects including those that are probably in the pipeline and how we can influence the, these programs or we can use the lessons learned to do more inclusive interventions to help one another to think about how to build uh, resilient communities, how to promote uh, inclusivity in what we do, and what resources we can bring together for a sustainable platform that can go beyond uh, life, the life of projects like the two-scale program. There is a great opportunity for all of us within the food system. The food system appears to be more gender responsive. How you deliver? All right. You've seen a lot of challenges, but also on the flip side of the coin, a lot of hope, like the Baringo South story, where there is change. And we can see when we invest in agriculture, the ripple effect is massive to a point of not only food security, but even bringing peace in specific regions just by delving in this particular sector, right? Now, we want to have a conversation on matters, uh, technology, utilization of technology in our farming systems. And um, there is a very big exhibition that is coming up at the KICC. We'll get to know about it, Agritech Africa exhibition. And um, this is critical because tech is the current and the future, all right? And to help us put all this into context of course in studio i have these two wonderful gentlemen uh, mr Samuel desai who's the ceo of radical communications thank you very much for making thank time you. and uh, we have dr barat patel uh who's the chairman of barat biogas energy limited and also um, orthopedic surgeon which is very fascinating i'll be coming to that later on uh, but for starters um Sanil, i mean agritech um africa exhibition this is the ninth edition yes i mean uh, the conceptualization of this exhibition uh why 
and I've seen the tech element there. Uh, I mean, was tech also big almost, is it an annual thing? So was it big nine years ago? Yeah, so we have been doing uh, agriculture technology exhibition around the world since last almost uh, 15, 20 years. Mm. When we decided to launch a technology show based on agriculture within Africa, I moved to a lot of countries. Your neighboring countries, some of the countries in uh, North Africa, West Africa. But when I landed in Kenya in back to 2012, I thought this is a destination we would like to start our journey mm -hmm. with the technology exhibition on agriculture. Mm -hmm. And first exhibition, first Agritech Africa we did in 2014. Mm -hmm. And this is the ninth consecutive exhibition, you can say. Two years during the COVID we could not do because the world was silent. Mm -hmm. But from 2000 to 2024, we have grown in terms of showcasing technology, which is for the farmers of Kenya and farmers of East Africa. Okay, that is a lot of growth. Uh, Dr. Barat, uh, I know we were chatting and um, it's beautiful. You've, you've been a sergeant since the year 1982. That's a long time. Uh, but apart from that, you're very passionate about farming. Maybe just to, to set the ground running, when you talk about technology in Africa, you come from India, uh, talk to me about adoption of technology. How vibrant is technology in the agricultural sector? Uh, this is a very good question and uh, I was seeing the news of uh, KTN today. Then uh, I would really appreciate that the now Kenyans, they have realized that the plantation is a must for a lot of things. And second, very important thing uh, uh, Kenya got this time is the flood. So the technology is very important in the sense that if you do not change the technology, if you do not change the future of the country or future of the world, then I think the farmers, they are going to be poorer and poorer. Mm -hmm. And by changing the technology, uh, the most important advantage that the cost cutting is there mm -hmm. uh, with the farming, that is very important. Mm -hmm. Second, that the production is, a, is going to be huge with technology mm. uh, because if you are doing the farming as for example of 1000 hectares of land then uh, that is that is there in uh, Kenya and all African countries then I think the technology is key to success starting okay. from seed processing unit starting from tractors starting from drone to sprinkle uh, the fertilizer I, I, I'll not tell or talk about the pesticides much but uh, drone is the one technology along with the AI. Mm -hmm. See, how would you identify the disease in a farm which is 2,000 hectares big? Mm -hmm. Then the best thing is to have the drone or a AI in your farm. Okay. And sitting at a home, you, you would see that, okay, this is a disease. Fungus is going to attack. Okay, now this uh, thieves, mites, white fly, they are going to attack. And then most important part with the technology is that you are going to reduce the expenses because it is the beginning and then you can prevent the further attack. Okay. That's, that's beautiful. And I, I, I'm glad you've even pre preempted that question of uh, the advantages uh, that come with uh, utilization of technology. But just going back to the exhibition bit, because your target, I believe, is people in the agricultural value chain. Absolutely. Um, talk to me about the impact that you've had over the past, uh, you know, uh, exhibitions that you've had. Uh, what is the curiosity of the farmers, the Kenyan farmer, and uh, what do you aim to achieve with this ninth edition? See, technology plays a vital role in your farm. And uh, when we have started from 2014 to 2024, if you see the growth, how many farmers have started coming from Kenya and other parts, other region of this, this world. This exhibition is also meant for the small scale and medium scale farmers. All the technologies which we are bringing about 200 exhibitors from 10 different countries. And this technology is showcasing by our various exhibitors. It is for the farmers of Kenya. Mm -hmm. If they come to exhibition, see that this, this kind of technology and they, they uh, implement such kind of technology in their farm, definitely their production will increase, the wastage of their crop will be reduced. Mm -hmm. So all the technology which we are showcasing is not only for the bigger size farmer, but for small scale farmer also like we are, see this time it is flood, but Kenya is also, there are a lot of rain fed technology mm -hmm. which we are 
bringing sprinkler drip irrigation and by using those drip irrigation and sprinkler how you can uh, you know farm in your uh, farming without the rain that is also one of the technology which kenya should adopt kenyan farmer should adopt mm-hmm. so such kind of technology mini tractors mm-hmm. you know when you have two hectares farm three hectares farm mini tractors can go easily in their farm cutting the plants and do everything mm-hmm. now there is a another crop cover is coming in terms of technology it is made from a non woven so there are a lot of fruit crop cover vegetable crop cover so in a global changing climate whether it is rain whether it is lot of heat this crop cover can save your production okay and less wastage so overall technology which we are going to showcase uh, the exhibition is starting from tomorrow at kicc mm-hmm. from 10 to 6 and more than 200 uh, exhibitors are participating and the, all the technology is for the farmers of kenya and the east africa definitely at this particular moment we want to take a short break but i like it to open up to our audience because our audience have a lot of questions um there is the question about uh technology up um you know uptake especially amongst farmers uh there's this popular phrase that we like in the country the average age of a farmer in Kenya is 60 years old so with that how do we make sure that we are adopting technology secondly how can we incentivize young people to come into agricultural value chain and thirdly with majority of our farmers being small scale the challenges that they are going we would like to open it up to you if you have any questions or uh, reach to us uh, on our social media platforms at KTN home at uh, farmers tv uh, um, at mr no keep him boy uh, on across all social media platforms share your question ask your question we'll be able to respond to some of those emerging challenges but right now the farm can you show text a short break remember our focus is on martyrs tech and agriculture and how that can be leveraged to not only make quality products but also help you as a farmer to make money stay tuned <laughs> It's a thing of beauty, so easy to use. It's just so easy to find what you're looking for. You know what? I just love the download option. I always have something for my private jet. Is the quality good though? What about network issues? You just have to change the data settings and presto. How much is it again? Just 300 bob a month. Just three bubbles of champagne. That's more like one bubble. <laughs> Check out the new Showmax app today for all your favorite local, international and kids hit shows and movies from just 300 shillings a month. Check out Showmax streaming for Africa. Isn't it just air in there? There's really no champagne in the bubble. Oh girl, you know what we mean. We connected. Uswa hisia na drama na telenovela freshi, movie kali, documentaries, mziki na lifestyle channel. Changa mkana Star Times. Let's get ready to run. download Star Times on app kwa Bundani Game Game kwa kati wa wote popote ulipo. Star Times. Furahia maisha kidigitali. Ili kutengenezea kitu. For different worlds. Come a trio with a shared destiny. Nikulinda na ikuongoze. Where will the fashion runway take them? Mimi ndachunga mawa yetu vizuri sana atiwe na rudi. Family business is everything. <laughs> the beauty and the beats. Shanga Monday to Friday at 8 p.m. on Maisha Magic Plus.
habari njema mchezo mpya kushinda hela umewasili tazama utuzwe ni mchezo rahisi na njia haraka ya kushinda hela ukitumia simu yako kuwa mmoja umamie wa mamia kila siku jishindie kuanzia shilingi elfu shirini ni rahisi deposit kwa anjeshi lingi shirini hadi tisina tisa kwenye paybill number 145656 account number KTN shinda sasa hivi draws na washindi kila hour kumbuka deposit kwa anjea 20 bob hadi 99 bob kwa paybill number 145656 account number KTN na unaweza kujishindia hadi elfu mia tatu We connected. Guswa hisia na drama na telenovela freshi, movie kali, documentaries, mziki na lifestyle channel. Changa mkana Star Times. Let's get ready to download Star Times on app kwa Bundani Kemkem kwa kati wa wote popote ulipo. Star Times. Furahia maisha ya kidigitali. I right, welcome back to the Farm Kenya show and you and I we have an agreement that the music is just amazing yeah uh, I love that music Kui Marisha I swear I've never sung anyway today we're talking about matters to do with uh, technology and agriculture and um it's very very critical of course in today i have mr Samuel uh, desai who is the ceo of radical communications and dr barat patel chair of barat bagas energy limited and also a passionate passionate uh, farmer and um you know offering solutions is part of your dna uh, dr barat now uh, one of the areas foundational issues if we are to transform the way we produce food is to take care of the most common medium that we grow food on on the continent and that is the soil soil health is very critical talk to me especially for majority of our farmers who are small scale farmers how can they ensure that soil health is up to standard and what is the impact of that in regards to production okay this is a very good question and uh, most of the people even in india they asked me about that what is the soil health like the human health the soil health is very important a very simple example i'll give that if your hemoglobin of the body is 14 then you are energetic the same is the soil health if the carbon content of the soil is more than 1.5% then the soil is healthy now the very important part that why i am focusing on the soil health is that your productivity of the crop increases this is very simple logic that the carbon which is there in the soil is the food for the bacteria and what bacteria will do whatever you are putting chemical fertilizer or any other fertilizer then it is the it is the uh, vehicle to transport the chemical fertilizer to the plant so this is very important that the soil health is very important carbon content is the main factor which is very important second factor is the humidity if the humidity is there in the soil then i think the bacteria and the earthworm they would they would work better so the very important part that the productivity of the produce will increase second the expenditure of the soil will reduce and you have the long term sustainable predictable production of your produce mm-hmm. this is what is the soil health mm-hmm. that's and that's a beautiful thing uh, i know earlier on dr barra touched on the utilization of technology and this is what we are selling to farmers is there a tech yeah 
because this is a, especially for young farmers we ask okay is there an app that i can take a photo of the soil and it gives me all the nitty gritties in regards to that soil but even as we do this exhibition i talked to me about some of the technological interventions to solve a critical component such as soil health see now if you have farm in any part of the world through satellite you can judge how the fertile uh, fertile your land is so those kind of technology our exhibitors are showcasing mm -hmm. one of the important uh, thing which doctor has told and i think there are, there are a lot of organic fertilizer companies showcasing real organic fertilizer made from cow dung and uh, you know green waste mm -hmm. so technology is important same times the right use of right product is also important mm -hmm. and i think now world is going towards uh, the organic fertilizer there has to be combination between agrochemicals and the fert organic fertilizer together but if you want to sustain more of your land if you want if you are uh, environment friendly with your product with your land with your crop i think the technology use of technology is must and there are lots of technology which is which can be useful for the farmers mm. as i said uh, drone uh, doctor suggested there are drone technology showcasing by our exhibitors there are protective cultivation whether it is polyhouse greenhouse uh, humidity factor also doctor suggested so those kind of technology our exhibitors are showcasing in this exhibition starting from tomorrow very very important so uh, to to mm -hmm. to add to this 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 is a very important question that uh, like a doctor uh, when goes to a visit to a patient then he has stethoscope he has got blood pressure equipment mm -hmm. thermometer small things like this we have invented for agritech africa and agri asia a small kit for farmers that they will taste the soil on the spot what is the carbon content what is the humidity what is the ph what is the ph of water like this a small kit is coming mm. you you go with that small kit in a farm test the soil test the water and very important part in the water is the solid content of the water that is very important that is ec mm -hmm. and second is the ph mm -hmm. so now kits are available where you can test the soil test the water now coming to the further technology suppose your plant is there then you give the medicine to the plant just like that to the patient you test it blood test is there ct scan is there mri is there lot of things are happening yes so like this now the lip test lip test equipment is coming you go in the farm squeeze the leaf put it in the put the drop on the instrument you will have everything on the card calcium is less magnesium is less this is less nutrient is less and according to that diagnosis of the plant you give nutrition to the plant wow this is very important Mm -hmm. that's that's very critical and <laughs> even just, just to add over yes. and above you know mm -hmm. grain is also a critical part of the ag entire agriculture evolution you have a lot of storage you have to done uh, when you when you grow the grain so there are a lot of uh, sorting technology the grain technology the silos all these technologies also been showcasing by our exhibitors mm -hmm. so i would urge and request all the farmers of kenya and east africa exhibition starting from tomorrow do visit kscc the entry is free for you mm -hmm. and see the technology how this technology can be used in your farm implement it and grow this Definitely. is what i would this like to is uh, this is very important uh, uh, as mr sanyal is talking about and the problem of the kenya is aflatoxin in the maize and that is the rejection lot of lot of rejection is there mm -hmm. now the most important uh, point to be noted that the storage big storage is that will prevent the aflatoxin to be there in the maize because that that is a poison mm -hmm. in the food yes so this is very important that it is not only uh, uh, the equipments are important but the storage part storage part without humidity is extremely important and i have seen that in kenya the biggest problem with the maize is the aflatoxin yes yes uh, qu quite quite a challenge in fact we are having that conversation here i think last week and there is so much innovation also to counter afla afla toxin i think one that has been created locally is aflasef 
which is helping to, to counter that. And I know many market players are solving this particular issue. But even when you talk about technology, uh, providing kits for far farmers that you can sort of, you know, uh, you are able to do the test by yourself. Uh, normally, one of the things that uh, come up is the element of cost. Yeah. Um, talk to me, even with the observation, uh, with these exhibitions, as time goes by, I know innovation gets more. Uh, are we seeing the, the affordability um, being an area of concern for majority, especially small scale farmers? And that cost coming down, what impact have you seen from that? See, absolutely. Uh, we are bringing a lot of low cost technology because now, as I said, we know Kenya and East Africa very well. We know what is the requirement of farmers of Kenya. So we are, when we book the exhibitors, we also talk to them that what kind of technology you should showcase, which should be there in the benefit or in the interest of farmers of Kenya. Mm -hmm. When we talk about small scale farmers, you know, animal husbandry also play a vital role. So if you have a small scale farming, but along with that, if you have a small dairy farmer, you can generate additional income out of that also. Mm -hmm. So along with the agri-tech, we have a small dairy and livestock Pavilion also, mm. where farmers can come see the technology, they can build a small dairy farm for the extra income because whatever you are uh, doing in a small dairy farm, it's an extra income which you are generating. You already have a land where you are growing and uh, you know earning money out of it. Mm -hmm. But if this additional value, if you can do, and I think this is the good combination of agriculture and animal husbandry together for the farmers of Kenya to grow. Okay. Uh, Dr. Barrett, uh, the issue of um, fertilizer, it's quite a sensitive one because uh, we have uh, the synthetic fertilizers and uh, we have the organic fertilizer. Now, uh, you are very passionate about growing organic and organic fertilizer. For our farmers, especially at a, at a farm level, are there practical ways that they can sort of implement at the farm level to make sure that they're producing their products organically? And if that is not possible, is there a combination where you can combine both worlds in a fair way to produce good and healthy products for the Kenyan market? Okay, this is a very good question and I would like to answer like this. That the, now we are we are going to put a theory today that the Kenya combo theory of fertilizer. Let us let us coin a word which is Kenya combo theory. Mm -hmm. So I do not talk to the farmers that you stop the chemical fertilizer. A very simple example: you are putting alcohol to your body every day one bottle, and if a doctor advises that you stop the alcohol, then a lot of things go, is going to happen. Same thing is with the tobacco and smoking people. It's very difficult. All the issues will come to the body. Like this, if you stop the pesticide and chemical fertilizer on a day one at zero level, then a lot of things will happen to the soil. So my answer to the question and to the farmer is a very simple solution. Mm -hmm. Kenyan combo theory, where you use the organic fertilizer in an amount and use the chemical fertilizer on a year one less by 30%. And I promise you as a farmer that nothing is going to happen to the soil and productivity mm -hmm. and the cost will be less. So a very important theory which is Kenyan combo theory of fertilizer using where you use the chemical fertilizer day one to one year is 30% less, the second year 40% less, the third year 50% less, wait for it, analyze that what is happening to the produce and the soil. And then after five years, you can jolly well decide that now we want to withdraw the chemical fertilizer to the tune of 80% and only 20% fertilizer, which is chemical. And then the other fertilizer is a organic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally feel that after five to six years, you are going to get the result in the form of the produce, which is healthy produce, mm -hmm. residue free produce, no poison into the produce and the soil health will be good and you will earn more money. That's how the farmer can increase the income by reducing the chemical fertilizer day by day for five to six years. Okay. Sanyal, I, I know 
even when it comes to going organic, uh, I mean, the technology world uh, has no boundaries. We always look at a, at a problem and try to offer a solution in that space. Um, is it also one of the core uh, elements of this exhibition, uh, the element of sustainability um, in agricultural production and how is it reflected in this exhibition? See, basically, I still feel that combination is required, synthetic mm -hmm. fertilizer and organic fertilizer for mm -hmm. maybe five, six years to come. Same time, use of technology is very important because you have to spray water because when you have a large uh, land with a lot of hectares, you can't simply do everything in soil. So technology like drone, you know, now you can, with the use of drone, you can uh, sprinkle the entire 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 hectares in a minute like this. Mm -hmm. So technology definitely is going to play a vital role mm -hmm. in terms of small scale farmer or in terms of big scale farmers. For years to come, I think, uh, we'll come to know whether which uh, fertilizer is going to play a major role. But now, I, one thing I can show that the entire world, mm -hmm. when people are talking about global warming, people are talking about health issues, the climate change, some or other way I feel that organic fertilizer is going to play a wide role and that's why all the government, not only Kenya, and our world government is now focusing on such kind of fertilizer yeah. for the farmers. Okay. See, mm -hmm. see, the most important thing is talking about, uh, I, I'll, I'll add one point where now the liquid fermented organic manure, the fertilizer in liquid form, so the advantage of the fertilizer, it is a nanotechnology, one liter fertilizer, Two liters of the fertilizer, at least in a short crop for three to four times, is sufficient for the fertigation. This is very important. And what will happen? The cost saving in logistic. Mm -hmm. That is one. And the second very important part, as for example, after one month you, you want to give the organic fertilizer. How would you give? Mm -hmm. Suppose granules are there or a powder is there, then it is impossible to give the organic fertilizer after one month or two months time. Liquid is the only solution which can be given in drip, sprinkler, loose water, and even by drone. Okay. And this is the technology which the Agritech Asia is coming up, and now they have demo. They are going to demonstrate tomorrow the fertilizer which is liquid, and you can sprinkler, you can use in the drip, you can uh, use by the drone. Ah. Capsules. And Some of the companies they have come out with the small capsules, mm -hmm. which can be you know previously our company used to uh, export from India or other parts of the world in a container, 50 kg bag fertilizer. It's a lot of logistics issue. Now with the liquid fertilizer with a capsule, it's become very easy. You just put a capsule in the liquid, and then you can uh, spray with sprinkler with the drone, and uh, the thing is done. Wow. You are saving a lot of money, and end of the day, the, those benefits the company is passing on to the farmers. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Um, Dr. Barra, there is also the issue of seeds. Because, uh, I mean, sometimes you have done, you've invested in your technology, uh, you've been, uh, be it sprinklers, for example, water, watering system, you even have the liquid fertilizer, you've gotten it right there. But you have the wrong seed. I, I, I think a right seed is the foundation of a right product. See, uh, where is, I always compare with the human being. Mm. Your seedlings, as for example children, they are not educated. They are not at, on, a, on a track. Then a uh, lot of things is going to happen to the life, no? Mm -hmm. To them and to you both. Like this, this seed is a very important factor to the farmer. My request to the all farmers that please do not purchase the seed which is non-branded and non-certified. You must purchase the seed which is branded with the receipt, with the bill, with the guarantee from a reputed shop. Mm -hmm. The very important part, I'll, I'll give the example, as per example, 100 seeds you are sowing, right? And the germination is 50%. So 50% of your seeds are gone. You are not going to again put the seeds to the soil because it is already germinated. So the, on a day one, if the germination is 50%, there is a loss of 50% production. Mm -hmm. This is gone. 
The second very important part that the production plays a very very big role by the quality of seeds. If the quality of seeds uh, are good, then the production is going to be uh, increased. Mm -hmm. So my request to all farmers that purchase the seed which is certified from a certified shop with the receipt and the bill with a guarantee. Okay. And such kind of exhibition, you mm -hmm. know, again play a good, good role because farmers are coming, see the technology, see the branded products. It helps them to decide which product I want to buy, which seed I want to buy, which fertilizer I want to buy. Because this exhibition is for them. Mm -hmm. So they should come and visit and see the technology, what world is using. And same technology, the farmers of Kenya also apply in their farm. Definitely. The very, very important mm -hmm. part which Agritech Africa is doing mm -hmm. is that... Uh, uh, I want to highlight is the education to the farmer. There are a lot of programs where we educate them. Mm -hmm. There are seminars. So we educate for them for the soil health. We educate them for the seeds. We, we take good lectures about the fertilizer. Then the very important uh, the problem which Kenya was facing before two years was the creeping time of the avocado. Mm -hmm. Lot of rejections were there. So like this, the education to the farmer even to KTN Media or even on the line is very important and that can resolve a lot of issues with the farmer. Exactly. And in seed, is there technological intervention and yes, the innovation coat, that we yes, see? Yes, the that? coating of mm -hmm. seeds is very important. Mm -hmm. It gives the 100% assurity. So that, that kind of products and technologies are also there. We have a lot of seed companies who are showcasing the branded seed in, uh, you know, for the farmers of Kenya mm -hmm. and our exhibition Agritech Africa is we are doing since 2014 under patronage of Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, mm -hmm. Republic of Kenya. So, mm -hmm. you know, you see the, how government also, uh, you know, putting a lot of importance for such kind of exhibition. Mm -hmm. We are getting a lot of support. Uh, tomorrow, uh, cabinet secretary is inaugurating our event. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have invited about 3,000 to 4,000 farmers across Kenya to visit the show. So, mm -hmm. this show is for them. We are inviting them on our own. Ministry is supporting the livestock department, is supporting the Kenya Dairy Board, is supporting. We have a partner like SNET, uh, uh, CMA, Agrochemical Association of Kenya. All is supporting this mega event. Mm -hmm. We have entire pavilion from China, India, Germany, Italy, Iran, South Korea, uh, Turkey, Egypt. So we have more than 10 countries participation in this exhibition. Definitely. This is for Kenyan farmers. Yes. Come and see the exhibition. Definitely. It's for you, the low cost technology mm -hmm. for the small and medium scale farmers. And absolutely it is very affordable. You see recently, the, there is a treaty also happened between India and Kenya of 250,000 uh, 250, million US dollar mm -hmm. through Exim Bank of India for the entire value chain of uh, agriculture. So this, all this government of India and Kenya is doing for the benefit of the farmers of Kenya and East Africa. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Bharat, uh, the livestock value chain, I know you've mentioned it a little bit. Uh, talk to me about some of the interventions because animal feed is one of the areas that is big and even production of animal feed has an impact on the final product for those who consume this livestock. Um, how, how critical is that, the livestock sector? And how, what do you think, especially farmers, should be able to do in the livestock value chain? Uh, this plays a very important role for most of the human being. And you will see, everybody drinks milk, milk product. So what my perception is that if your animal, cow, buffalo, whatever may be the animal, if they are eating the poison, pesticide, chemical fertilizer, gazing and eating the grass which is uh, with the chemical fertilizer and pesticide. That pesticide is going to come with the milk and you are going to drink that particular milk or the, eat the ice cream or the milk product. So again, it's not only the food grain which is very important. It is the milk and milk product from the cattle farm is also very important to prevent the good uh, uh, health of the human being. Mm -hmm. So it's critical that what, what you give feed to the cattle, either dry fodder, either green fodder, or in the form of the uh, grains. This is very important. You should not, no farmer should look only at the quantum of the milk they give. 
they should focus also on the quality of the milk which is residue free without pesticide and without chemical fertilizer mm. so i will entirely agree that this farming cattle farming is the key to success for all the farmers in the form of their income mm. that is one mm. second the cow dung i always define cow dung cow dung to gold is my uh, terminology mm. cow dung to gold now you talk about that doc how cow dung to gold mm. that you manufacture the best fertilizer organic fertilizer from cow dung and that is the gold for the soil mm. so my slogan to most of the farmer that please go for cow dung to gold fertilizer which is very important for your soil which gives carbon to the soil which gives bacteria to the soil you will have plenty of earthworm in the soil after 2 to 3 years this is very important mm. and the the very important part that the do not use the raw cow dung for the soil decompose it very simple procedure mm -hmm. and for this there is a training in the agritech africa that how to decompose your raw cow dung mm -hmm. very simple technique without any expenditure so mind well my dear farmers this is the message to you kenyans that the cow dung to gold is the key to success in farming and soil health definitely cow dung to gold we call it black gold we call it the black, black gold. gold yes <laughs> <laughs> you know they say the goose that lays uh, the golden egg now yes. it will be the cow and, yes absolutely and, and absolutely. the god absolutely yeah. <laughs> but uh, yes. uh, and and this brings a very critical issue that information is power especially for our farmers for the kenyan farmers small scale farmers um i know the exhibition under the auspices of the exhibition we have the trainings yes. um have we been under utilizing our capacities and the resources that are within our small farms and do you think this exhibition is that turning point absolutely agritech africa is going to be turning point for the farmers of kenya you have lot of natural resources you have a beautiful fertile land so if you use the right technology in your farm you are going to grow big and end of the day you grow big you have a more production it's going to benefit for you and for for your country so such kind of exhibition especially agritech africa we are working hard we our team is work, working very hard to bring the latest technology the affordable technology for the small and medium scale farmers of kenya and east africa since 2014 mm. and this year we have a lot of new technology which one should come see and apply this technology in their farm again i'm saying same things but it's it's very it's very critical that they are this kind of technology in their farm it's going to benefit for the for them and as well as for the kenya Definitely. see the very important point which uh, he forgot to talk about there is no entry it is free to the farmer you work in so when the yes. things are free to the farmer where you are we are going to educate you you are going to see the exhibition you are going to see the innovation yeah so my dear farmers come to agritech africa yes. which is free entry that's true this is very important yes very very important and uh, i even encourage especially the youth within the city and i know within the the program we've host the young people are doing amazing things in small scale uh we've we've hosted people are doing snail farming for example within the urban setup that is also one of the issues that are, i'm seeing a lot of young people taking interest i think if you're a young person within nairobi walk into cash you see walk into this place learn 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 it's free education we want to take a short break remember uh we'll be coming one, back one, later one, one on before, uh, before the sorry. break yeah just uh, your point quickly the there was a lecture of mine uh, in the indian uh, youth mm -hmm. that the profession you select is engineer chartered accountant it a lot of things i suggest professional farming is the best profession to select where the earning is huge mm. that's true and i mean new york guaranteed uh, people will need to eat each and every single day uh, the market is there but how do you equip yourself that's why this exhibition is very very critical uh there is it is the international exhibition and conference on agriculture dairy livestock poultry and grain technology and it's happening 
at the KICC uh, starting uh, tomorrow, which is the 12th, uh, going 13th, 14th. Walk and entry free. We want to take a short break. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at some of the questions that you're posing as farmers and um, how uh, you can find solutions to your challenges even before you go to the exhibition tomorrow. Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Telenovela Freshy, Mufikari, Documentaries, Nziki, na Lifestyle Channel. Changa mkana Star Times. Let's get ready to... Download Star Times on app kwa Brudani Kemkem kwa kati wa wote popote ulipo. Star Times, fura hia maisha kidigitali. This week on KTN Home. This week on What's Your Story? My strong advice would be, we don't do failure, we don't do no, we just do yes, we just go forward. We have the President and CEO of the Global Center on Adaptation. What does a bad day look like for you? I don't have bad days. I want to have an impact every single day. And I'm grateful at the end of the day what has been achieved. And yeah. if it's a day with sort of marginal impact, yeah. it motivates me even more to the next day, okay, step it up, uh, Patrick, and drop mm. it down. So when you feel you're not at par with anything, you drop it. I honestly believe yeah. it's not about the skills which you bring to the table okay. or how intelligent you are. Yeah. Are you a hard worker? Because this hard work and determination yeah. can bring you very far. Wow.
Sports Scription yako uwe connected. Guswa hisi na drama na telenovela freshi, movie kali, documentaries, mziki na lifestyle channel. Changa mkana Star Times. Let's get ready to run. Download Star Times on app kwa kurudani game game kwa kati wa wote popote ulipo. Star Times, fura hia maisha kidigitali. All right, welcome back to the Farm Kenya show and we are on the final stretch We're talking about technology. There is a wonderful Agritech Africa exhibition uh, that will be starting tomorrow at the KICC. It is free and you're encouraged to walk in, learn, look at some of these solutions that are being offered. And remember, it's cutting across the different sizes within the value chain. Majority of farmers in Kenya are small scale farmers. There is something for you. Large scale farmers, there is something for you. And more importantly, they're also offering an education, uh, you know foundation because information is power you will be taught you'll be able to learn i think it's a beautiful thing a good opportunity uh that you can take advantage and in studio of course we have sanyal uh desai who's the ceo of radical communications and dr barat patel chairman of barat Bagas uh energy limited i say that this uh half we will take uh some questions that are coming in uh um, so let me see how important are partnerships with international organization and tech companies in advancing agricultural technology in Kenya? It's very important because whenever we book any international exhibitors, they always come here to look for partners. They, they may not in a position because a lot of other things to reach to the end user directly. So whenever they come, they, they come with the technology, they are looking for a dealer distributor network who can sell their product within Kenya or to the close by country. Mm -hmm. So obviously this exhibition is also B2B because it's nine years. So now this exhibition is also B2B and B2C. Mm -hmm. But B2B exhibition, a lot of international companies are coming and they want to give that dealer distributorship to the uh, industry stakeholders and agriculture stakeholders of Kenya. So obviously the Agritech Africa is 100% for the one who is interested to import or take dealer distributorship from the international companies. Okay. Uh, this one goes to Dr. Barad. Farmers preserving seeds traditionally as was done by our forefathers. Is that okay? Uh, see, a lot, <coughs> lot of things and the debate is going on. Uh, one is the genetically modified seeds, uh, which is hybrid seed and second is the uh, original seed which we preserve. But mind well, my dear farmers, uh, that genetically modified seeds, uh, it is not harming much to the health. This is, this is definite. Second very important part that the, the seeds which you preserve, uh, they, those are the seeds which will not give the profitable produce to you. This is also very important. So if you, if you accept uh, that the profit is, is uh, not a dirty word and try to earn it, then I think the, the preserved seeds uh, play now in this world a little role. Mm -hmm. That is what is my message to the farmers. Okay. So uh, traditional practices. Uh, Dr. Bharat is there. Um, a way to infuse because you find a lot of farmers especially in many rural settings uh, this is how my my dad farmed and this is what I'm doing and that's why even this exhibition is important because you are able to learn but is there a way that they can coexist the, the, the only way that you have to educate the consumer that this is the traditional farming traditional seeds been preserved for everything vegetables fruits and grain then and then if you get the money from the traditional uh, farming or the uh, original seeds uh, that makes some sense otherwise 
uh, you are not going to get the profit out of the uh, traditional seeds okay. which you preserve. Okay. And uh, uh, I mean, the element of, of traditional practices, I think one of the perspectives that we see when technology comes in very strongly is our traditions and uh, what we are used to. Um, looking at how we've, we've done farming initially, I don't know, for, for this exhibition, how are you making sure that that wall that we see between traditional practices and embracing new technology is sort of uh, brought down in, in a way that is very palatable to farmers? See, any technology basically made from the human technology only, I would say. Mm -hmm. We used to have this plow before. Yes. Now, all the farm implements, as our attachment we use for tractors, it's kind of a same thing, but using technology for a faster production, for faster cutting of small land, big lands. So, technology nowadays is must. Mm -hmm. and, and see, traditional technology is also important. I'm not denying it. But if you want to grow, if you want to, if you have a bigger farm, maybe five hectares, four hectares, and, and now, nowadays the most important thing is shortage of manpower. Mm -hmm. So now with the shortage of manpower, technology is going to play a big role because a lot of employment issues are becoming, people don't want to work in the farm. And if you don't have the proper manpower, only technology or through technology you are going to survive Definitely. for your farming. Definitely. Let me see. Uh -huh. Talking about, talking of black gold from cow dung, how is the training and the cost of the training to farmers? Is it affordable? I think Dr. Bharat, you need to clarify this. Training is zero rupee or zero ceiling. Uh, simply we have to educate the farmer that this is how you have to have the big uh, 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 this thing well where you put every day the cow lung, then you put the decomposing bacteria and bacteria onto it, you put water onto it and uh, wait for a year and you use the cow lung uh, next year. Mm. That, is, that is the technology. So it is no cost, no extra expenditure, nothing is there, still it is the best fertilizer. Okay. I would add that you can also make biogas from cow dung because you make slurry, mm. slurry you can use for fertilizer and gas you can, so it all depends on how you want to go about it. If you want to invest, biogas and fertilizer is a good combination. With a cow, cow dung and green waste, you build a small plant, big plant, biogas you sell or for use for your own consumption, you make fertilizer and do farming or sell it. So ah. Bharat Biogas has the same concept that uh, we produce 14,000 cubic meter of biogas every day and then the gold. Mm -hmm. And for a small farmer, see, I'm talking now for a small farmer, they can have a two cubic meter of the plant, put the cow lung into that uh, digester and decompose the cow lung, uh, get the gas for the domestic use, gas the gas for the cattle farm and uh, you have the best fertilizer. Mm. And, and this technology is are there exhibition absolutely absolutely it is ah. exhibition it is it is going to showcase by dr bharat patel company mm. that tomorrow at the exhibition and obviously there are technology program also the workshop which is going to speak on the same subject mm -hmm. so anyone who is interested to attend and to know more about using how cowden can be used they should come and meet dr bharat patel at the exhibition definitely black gold uh, that's the term uh -huh. I, I, I think this one go to you, um, Stutish Hai. Yes. Um, what are the most commonly used agricultural technologies among Kenyan farmers? I think farm implements, the agriculture mechanization, entire value chain being a, a attachment to, uh, a, for example, farm tractor attachment, mm -hmm. the, uh, the small scale farmer the drip irrigation, the, the sprinklers, a lot of Kenyan farmers. I have witnessed myself because since last 10 years, I see how my uh, drip irrigation sprinkler manufacturers has grown supplying a lot of product to Kenya. Mm -hmm. So this is very important for the farmers of Kenya. In my last 10 years, 
the farmers of Kenya has started using a lot of technology in terms of tractor uh, machinery, farm implements, drip irrigation system, uh, pipes, uh, <laughs> the, the cattle feed, the grain storage technology. Mm -hmm. This is my personal experience which I have seen in last 10 years. Ah, definitely. And even as the questions continue coming in, we've, we've had the extremities of uh, uh, climate situation in the country. We've had floods, uh, which was uh, massive and quite destructive. And uh, now our weatherman is telling us that uh, we are expecting a drought. Uh, Dr. Barat, in terms, for me as a small scale farmer, with all these ups and downs, one moment I'm flooded, the other time I don't have a, 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 a in drought, how do I create an environment that is stable? Okay, Let's, this is very important for most of the countries, not only for Kenya. Uh, I would suggest two things. For a flood situation, uh, small, small lakes, small lakes, small pits, it is multiple small pits to be created where uh, there is a water reservoir. That is one thing. So whenever there is a drought, you use that reservoir water for drought. That is one. Second very important part uh, uh, which as an organic fertilizer manufacturer we have seen that now we have fertilizer where that organic fertilizer will retain 400% of water into the soil. Whenever there is crisis or stress they will release the water and the plant never needs water. Plant needs humidity, moisture. So this is very important. So both of the things when a drought is there you use the fertilizer which is specially organic which will retain the water content to the tune of 400 percent and release the water during the stress. Mm -hmm. These are the simple solutions and the cost is very little because it acts as an organic fertilizer, organic nutrient and organic matter mm -hmm. and then water reservoir. Yeah. So I would suggest that in such exhibition you also have a water storage technology where you have a lot of food how you can store the water through technology. And when you have drought, the rain fed technology is also important. Like I said, uh, drip, micro drip technology. So I think people of Kenya and farmers of Kenya should use such technology in drought, which is called rain fed technology. Definitely. Yes. Because uh, that's a challenge with our Absolutely. natural system. And sort of it's, it's created a weak point where we, we call it the rain fed agriculture. So when you don't have rains, you can't be fed, you know, so it's rain fed <laughs> agriculture. Yes. It, it becomes a challenge. Absolutely. Um, and, and we've seen maybe those who are doing large scale production, they are able to sort of create this infrastructure where they dig boreholes, uh, able to produce food um, all year round. All right. Absolutely. Uh, but for these many small scale farmers, um, the cost element of putting up this drip and storage technology. Talk to me about that. Is it, uh, is it affordable? Uh, maybe is there room for improvement price-wise so that we can see mass uptake of some of these interventions? So uh, drip technology is very affordable. Whether you have a small scale farm or, or large scale farm, that is not the problem. One of the most important thing to save your crop, the non-woven uh, crop cover it's very reasonable in terms of price. If you don't want to have your own polyhouse or greenhouse, you can use the crop cover. There are fruit crop cover, there are vegetable crop cover. It's just very simple. You make tunnel, you put the crop cover on it and it gives, it saves a lot of your, uh, you know, production. Mm -hmm. And also because now when you are growing a banana, for example, or pomegranate, there are a lot of insects which also damage your uh, fruits. So by using crop cover, which is very low cost in terms of price, any small scale farmers also can afford this kind of fabric, which is called non one fabric, specially made for agri uh, agriculture. And if you see in the other parts of the world, for example, India or Europe, people have started using such kind of fabric in a massive hectares of land. Mm -hmm. I, I can show you, or I can give you example where 500 acres, 700, 7, thousand acres land they are using such kind of crop protection which is called crop cover for fruits and for vegetables definitely dr barat uh, uh, that element of um, 
uh, the cost implication? Um, is it something that is sensitive uh, to you as somebody who is very passionate, especially for small scale farmers? See, very simple suggestion for cost cutting. That small dig can be done by anybody else. And a plastic. Put the plastic into the dig or a small well and collect the water. Very simple solution. You have to work very hard and think about it. Mm -hmm. That if the cost is the factor for a small farmers, like one acre, two acre land, then this is the, this is the way that people are doing, even Kenyan people are doing. Mm -hmm. Fish pond. Fish pond is again a very good, uh, if you're a small scale farmer, but if you store the water and you, so you do fish. Both, you do both the things are, so cost cutting is there. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever there is crisis, you use the same water. Uh, small plastic, Yes. you put a plastic so that there is no seepage of, seepage of the water into the soil. Mm. This is very important. I have seen in, in other parts of the world, Yes. Uh, those who are not actually into farming, but they are into business of fish farming. They, they take a land, make such small, small pond, grow the fish and sell it. It's called fish pond technology. Mm. It's very simple, as mm. doctor said. And water. And water, a plastic. So water is there, you grow fish and you sell it. Wow. Ah. Yeah. So, so world small, is changing towards technology. Small suggestions mm. of small ponds mm. and a plastic, mm. no cost. Mm. And uh, fish, no cost. Wow. And water, no cost. That's incredible. Um, now, we come into the end of the show. We have a few minutes to closing this up. Um, starting with you, Dr. Barat. I know you have a lecture, if we may call it that, but it's interactive and information segment for our farmers. Um, what, what will be your key areas um, for farmers who are watching and they want to learn? What will, will this, this information and education element of the exhibition uh, be focusing on? Uh, very important information which I would like to put it that the the education program at Agritech Asia which is very important mm -hmm. just come down there put the questions in your mind lot of lot of group farmers are coming so you can uh, you can have the groups come there what you are doing tell to the, the team we are there will educate them. That is the first thing. Mm -hmm. The second very important thing that small to bigger farmers, uh, you just see the technology. If they can spend the money, then uh, which is cost effective, then then you, you go into the depth of the exhibition and uh, take up few ideas, few ideas from there and uh, uh, you are beneficial. For the larger farmers, mm -hmm. uh, we have got a lot of, lot of many things are there uh, where we can provide them uh, the technology, the technology transfer, the tie-ups with the lot of uh, uh, the business class of people there. So for all the farmers and where our worry is a small farmer. Mm -hmm. So for small farmer, education program and doing the things without expenditure is the key to success. Okay. And uh, Mr. Desai, um, in closing, this is big, starting tomorrow. This is a massive, massive opportunity for our farmers. Um, first of all, I, I like it to be, to speak to the young people, yeah? You know, we love coming to the city. Education brings us here. Uh, we try to innovate here. There are more opportunities. But I'm, I'm told the tide is changing and farming is doing that. Uh, talk to me how, especially for the young people, they can tap so much into, into this particular exhibition, how it will be of value to them. And secondly, for that somebody who is not yet convinced to be there tomorrow, I mean, uh, how do you change their minds? Okay, so youth in agriculture is very important. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about agri-tech, agri-tech is having three pillars for youth. One, any youth wants to enter into entrepreneurship. He wants to ta start his own business. Mm -hmm. He has got a circle of farmers within his county or surroundings. He can take the dealer distributorship of the, all the international companies coming to the exhibition. That is one way of getting into the agriculture business for 
as a young entrepreneurs the the youth is who is already in farming they can come there learn the technology understand the technology and the workshop by a lot of expertise speakers from around the world mm -hmm. they understand and same time whatever they listen in the workshop mm -hmm. they can see those technology in the exhibition seeing is believing theory is one part if but same theory you can use live in the exhibition saying is believing is i i i i believe in that okay so whatever you see you have to believe and use those technology in your farm for your growth okay and third important thing for uh, youth in agriculture interaction nowadays interaction is very important today also you learn so many things from maybe dr bharat which you are not knowing mm -hmm. so face to face interaction in any such kind of exhibition is very important you learn so many things which which you even you did not think of it i am i am exhibitors and i have some technology to for you to showcase you don't know this but when you come to such kind of plat platform you meet exhibitors you meet lot of international speakers international visitors also coming to the show farmers of kenya can interact with the farmers of china farmers of india farmers of ethiopia they can exchange the ideas how you are doing uh, you know tech, how you are using technology in your farm which can uh, benefit to me in my farm also so i think this is a right interactive platform any exhibition not only agritech africa but any such kind of big exhibition is very important for any youth having uh, agriculture experience or farming ex experience they should come and attend such kind of exhibition so i would again request all the farmers of kenya all the youth agriculture entrepreneur of kenya come to kicc tomorrow 12 13 and 14 we have a 10 am to 6 pm exhibition it's completely free for you come see the technology and adopt this technology in your farm interact with the international company take the dealer distributorship and grow together Definitely. thank you definitely let us grow together absolutely wow you guys have been an absolute pleasure to talk to yeah thank you same uh, you. you know it's like long lost friends you know you are perfect host yeah yeah you guys are amazing and uh, i'm glad this is happening where young people will be able to take advantage remember it's the international exhibition conference on agriculture dairy livestock poultry and grain technology so it covers the whole valley chain and not only technology element of it come and learn interact with other farmers absolutely. are you planning to go into farming this is the absolute place for you to to come and uh, and learn and be grounded don't make the same mistakes the farmers made learning opportunity in studio of course we've had wonderful wonderful people sanyal desai ceo radical communications and dr barat patel Chairman Bharat Bagas Energy Limited, and uh, if you walk into KICC tomorrow, you'll find these two gentlemen Absolutely. there and many more farmers that you can ask uh, your questions even in person. But thank you very much for joining with us over the past hour and a half right here at the Farm Kenya Show. It's been beautiful conversation, and I know it's triggered something in you that will lead you to KICC to be able to learn and grow. Let us grow together. My name is Noki Kimboy. That's where we put a full stop today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. Farm Kenya, we are out. <laughs>